All right, here is a quick update where I'm at with this car. But I'm gonna run through the basics for you real quick in a brief video. So in order to tackle the cooling system, starting with the radiator, it needs to come off. Once you remove the radiator, you gain a lot of access to the drive belt and all the pulleys individually. This makes life a lot easier when it comes time to service. You also have a cross pipe there that are joined together by a couple of rubber hoses. That cross pipe is metal and it runs all the way the distance and the length to the other side of the engine. You can go in there and gain a lot of access, but you first need to remove this bracket here. The bracket itself is loose now. Everything just comes right off. These two sensors are actually for your ignition. This kind of lifts up. You just kind of set it up over here. Look at that. The three, I kind of am pretty meticulous with my deconstruction of anything. So I put each, each ground and each nut back in place. So that's two. Should be a third one. I think the third one went threaded on top of this port here. Yes, it did. It went through here and it was threaded up top. And the same goes for this side. You have, I believe, two grounds on this side, two bolts. The third one comes up here on this little rubber ga uh, grommet. And you have the thread on top of the condenser. Once you do that, you don't necessarily have to remove the screws for the ignition. I, uh, actually, yes, you do. You have to remove the screws for the ignition modules here because they're joined. Let me get this thing kind of balanced there. They're joined by this. These are brackets that go to the underside, plug into here. These are small Phillips screws. Make sure you soak them all in WD-40. These go placed onto this condenser. Uh, well, actually, I don't know what this piece is, via a rubber insulator, this little rubber foam, whatever it is. You want to keep that intact and in place when removing it, just be careful. Also running the uh, length of this bracket, I have it turned over, I forgot to show you guys. You have a couple of relays here. These relays function for your fan. They come with a series of grounds. I have videos in the process of removing where I recorded how they all went. So when it came time to reassemble, I knew exactly how they went. What's up, son? All right, so let's uh, let's keep All going to the belts. All right, removing each belt is pretty fun because there's four. There's four belts on this uh, this V12, and each one is controlled by a kind of a old school approach. So at this point, I've loosened everything up. For the air conditioning belt, loosen these three bolts. This kind of keeps this nice and loose from here, so it allows it to kind of move and pivot. This bolt right here has to get pushed out. This one over here as well. Then the whole component kind of just, if I had enough torque, I can move this down and this will follow the path and kind of open up or apply tension. Right now it's in its loosest state, so it's pushed all the way to the right. That's how you remove the air conditioning. Next you have this idler right here. This controls another belt. Uh, this one would be uh, via your water pump, I believe, because I also think that's the water pump, but I haven't done much reading. All right, your tensioner right here gets loosened by there. This allows it to move left and right. As you can see, I can easily move that bad boy. Uh, of course, you're going to remove these bolts here. No need to, well, yes, actually, to loosen this one if you want. I loosened it a bit, and tension is applied this way. So right now it's in its loosest state, which is right there. Let's move on here to the power steering. Same case, same applies. Loosen this one, loosen this one a little bit. Actually, I don't even think I loosened that one. Undo these two bolts from right there. The whole series. You can get a little torque and apply it. You see how it just moves freely there. Done. So that's three out of four belts. Now the last one being your, being your alternator is a little bit more difficult to, uh, to hit. And I had to do it from above and below. So right there, the same applies. Three bolts, the fourth one being right there to the neck. You start to find its uh, orientation and start removing tension off that. You can't remove this alternator one without removing all of these first. So. Now that you're in there, it'll be good security to change the water pump, which is what I'm waiting for. I'm considering also changing the alternator. And there are a couple of modifications where you can remove an air, uh, an air pump that's for emissions, but I'm just kind of thinking about it right now. But that's, that's where we're at right now. All right, cool. So I have a slight tripod set up here for my camera now. All right. I'm gonna go ahead and swing this bracket back forward kind of just leaving it in its place slightly. Take 
all the little wires, kind of gently these sensors, put them all back, kind of right there. Okay, let me show you something. Right here I have a cruise control bellow. This at one point was placed kind of haphazard. Well, it was kind of placed right here. Went just like that. So as you can see, it kind of covers up a great amount of space that I would like to have. Let me show you over here. Right there. So basically, what's holding that in place, you have one screw there, uh, one in the middle. Now, two of these are smaller size than the other one. And then if I rotate that camera right, uh, there is the last one. One, two, three. That kind of removes the front of this uh, cruise control bellow. And from there you undo a hose. Here, let me remove this actually now out of the way so you can kind of see better. There's a piece of wire that goes through there, joined by a... a uh, like a thread and two nuts and that kind of is the adjuster you can say you loosen those two break them loose and that wire runs all the way through here through the firewall and I've kind of squibbled it up a little bit there out of the way I kind of just bent it up a little bit there out of the way and it goes in there so so I kind of leave it there for right now and once you do that I cut the uh, the actual wire with this I, I don't have any need for the cruise control. I know this is probably not the best way to do it, but I just wanted access to the V and I removed it. Out she comes. And I'm inside the V and I'm inspecting everything and I can notice a ton of sludge. I mean, it's just caked on there entirely too much. You see the top of my spark plug was barely connected. With little to no effort, I removed that boot and I see a bunch of crud and debris in there. I don't know if you guys can see it too well, but that stuff is nasty, dude. That spark plug is completely submerged in this stuff. So before I do anything, you even see a washer in there. Before I do anything, I have to clean all of this up. All of this sludge is no good. It doesn't make my job any easier. And that's what I'm trying to do, and I'm trying to do it right. So by the end of this, I'll have a nice clean V. Oh, almost forgot to mention this right here. That line runs also at the bottom of the cruise control. It's a vacuum operated line and it goes to here. All right, undo that and kind of plug it in and you won't have an issue with like an erratic uh, idle. So today I'm hoping to do ignition. I'll be recording a little bit as, and a little bit as I go. It's kind of early here in uh, Maryland. Cruise control is gone. Like I said, I had to cut that wire that runs over here now. It goes inside of here, and I just kind of wrap it up in there, and it's just a little tiny wire. Cut that off with some crimps. Undid the three bolts in the front. One, two, three. Capped off the vacuum line right here with one of the bolts that came off with it. And now I'm trying to access the V. I'm trying to clean everything up so I can go in there and do everything kind of easily. That's it.